join us at Women of Courage and celebrate the achievements of women. Persistence is one of the keys to success. One of the characteristics of a successful person is that person is persistent. People who are persistent make up in their minds that they are going to win. They are going to see their project through to the finish no matter what. They plot and plan every day what they're going to do per any eventuality. Persistence is defined as or called the ability to stick to something. If you practice a violin for over a year in order to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Stars perfectly, that means you are persistent. Persistence can also mean something that lasts for a long time, which means you're patient. Persistence and patience are kissing cousins. You cannot have one without the other. Pick a successful person and examine their life and you will see that before he or she won, that person was persistent. Go back into history and examine the lives of some of the most famous military generals like Patton or Hannibal or MacArthur. All of these generals were persistent regardless of the defeats that they experienced in battle. MacArthur was one of the most famous generals who truly believed in persisting. He lost the Philippines to the Japanese in 1941. Did he give up? No. He said he would return. He made up in his mind that no matter what he had to do, he was going to go back into battle against the Japanese one more time. He made up in his mind that he would be the victor. And guess what? He was the victor. Who do you think it was that represented the United States aboard the aircraft carrier where the armistice was signed? General? MacArthur signed the peace treaty on the deck of the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay on September the 2nd, 1945. That was not a coincidence. The Pentagon felt that MacArthur deserved that honor. Not only did General MacArthur sign the peace treaty, he was put in charge of Japan. In 1992, the USS Missouri, which was called the Mighty Mo, was decommissioned for the second and last time. The battleship was removed from the Navy's reserve list in 1995 and moved to Pearl Harbor as a museum and a memorial ship in 1998. General MacArthur made history when he returned to Washington after suffering a defeat in 1941. No defeated general asked their commanding officer for more support to allow them to return to battle. On December 8, 1941, General MacArthur's Air Force was destroyed in a surprise attack by the Japanese, who then soon invaded the Philippines. MacArthur's forces had to retreat to the Bataan Peninsula where these men struggled to survive. Thousands of these men died, yet MacArthur said he would return. Remember General Hannibal? Hannibal is widely considered to be one of the greatest military commanders in human history. He commanded the Carthaginians' main force against the Roman Republic in the Second Punic War. During the Second Punic War, Hannibal famously led 
an army of war elephants across the Alps. Although many of these elephants perished in under the harsh condition, the surviving elephants were successfully used in battle where they panicked the Roman cavalry and allies. You should make it a habit to read military history. You will learn the characteristics that made these men great and what led to their successes and failures. What you will learn is important knowledge. You can learn from one another's mistakes and failures. Persistence is akin to tenacity. Tenacity is the quality or fact of being very determined. When a person is tenacious, they gather facts and they look for solutions. They seek out people who may have the answers to their problems. They read and research until they find satisfactory solutions. They test their hypotheses. They gather like-minded people to work on problems with them. They are people who always believe there is an answer to every problem. Sometimes these people have to wait until technology catches up with them or they create the technology themselves. Remember, the military started using drones in surveillance. Now drones are used in attacks. These drones are now armed not just with high-powered cameras. The drones are outfitted with bombs and ammunition. Tenacious people are inventors. They create out of a need for a solution. This is why the military is so lucrative. These men are always looking for the next best weapon. This is why learning how other people think and view the world is always helpful in our everyday life. If you want to win, then you have to develop a winning attitude and accept the fact that you have to develop your mind and body and that you must constantly seek knowledge and be around like-minded people. Winning requires preparation and persistence. Muhammad Ali did not enter the ring without preparing for his fights. Michael Jordan did not get on the basketball court without practicing and preparing his mind to win. No one great ever succeeds without preparation. This is what you must do. You must prepare to win, which means that in order to do your best, you do not have a child that you can ill afford to care for without an education. There are just some behaviors that you just do not participate in. You don't spend your money on marijuana. You don't spend your life in a bar. You do not spend your time gossiping at work. You look for activities that will help you grow, that will make you a better, strong person. This is why you pal around with like-minded people because these people are also always looking for something exciting and knowledgeable to do, and you can learn from these people. During the break, there will be a short discussion of four terms, self-control, declaration, fortitude, and resilience. Pay close attention to this announcement because these terms are important in a successful person's life. People do not just become successful like magic. There is a formulation period during which times their development, their talent develops. Again, pay close attention to this announcement because it does give you an insight into the depth of what people have to go through to become successful. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break while you listen to information regarding willpower and encouragement. It is all a matter of learning new behaviors. And please remember, it is easier to build strong minds than to repair injured people. What I said is a modification of a quote by Frederick Douglass. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Now for my break. 
Join the Women of Courage show and celebrate the achievements of women. All during the year, every Friday at 3 p.m. and every Sunday at 8 a.m. Here on WHPR TV 33, channel 88.1 FM. And learn how you too can become a woman of courage. It is important that you know the greatness you can achieve. Need a publisher? Contact Touch by the Light Publishing Services today. We can help. We can help you write, publish, or promote your book. Get the best book publishing services available. Call 734-786-3233. Leave your contact information and we will get back to you. Or email us at yithril 11 at netzero.net. Get the best proofreading and adducing services, book cover and website development, book trailers, and more. Email us at yithril 11 at netzero.net to get started. Why get up in the morning to live your nightmare the whole day? Doing things that make it a horrible day. Wasting time and taking pain. Just wishing for things to change. Without realizing you can be the change. You can be the prophet of your own life. You are the solution. You can turn your life around. You can still complete your education. You can still find a better job. You can still find love. You can still be happy. Take control of your life. Live the life you deserve because you are the prophet of your life. You can read the first chapter of the book by going to the website https colon slash slash touchbythelight.us. Order You Are the Prophet of Your Life today. individual is convicted of a crime and sent to prison, the psychological effects are often enormous. For some, they could be under the impression that they have reached the end of their earthly journey. Many will lose hope and despair and feel there is nothing else to live for. Clearly, all these are false impressions. We have taken it upon ourselves and Touch and Light Publishing to help inmates do introspection and see that their best lives are still ahead of them. Our series of books for male and female inmates will show them how they can make the best of their lives after prison. The stories contained therein are relatable. They are stories that will teach discipline, perseverance, forthrightness, and many more. It will deepen their understanding of how they can practically direct the affairs of their lives in whatever direction they desire. They will be able to inculcate good habits and do away with unhealthy ones. When they are eventually paroled, we want them to be able to see brand new versions of themselves. You can help us achieve this dream by donating towards the purchase of this collection of books for men and women in prison. For more information, please contact us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Today, I want to talk about declaration making the announcement about who you will become. The thing about declaring or making a statement is once you say it, you begin to own it. It becomes yours. Today, I will no longer be a victim. Today, I will begin to make change. Today, I will start to take care of myself. Those are statements that you can own. Do not allow someone else's opinion have the final words on your heart. I want you to declare who you are. Declare who you will become. Today is the day for change. Today, I want to talk about self-control, the restraint exercised over one person's impulses, emotions, or desires. It is easy nowadays to lose control. We eat too much, drink too much, everything is accessible to us. 
The hard part in life is finding that balance, that presence of mind to know what is good for you and to live with that discipline. I know through my own journey that when I am balanced, when I'm showing self-restraint, I start moving better. I start thinking better. I become more confident in who I am. And that's what I want you to think about. What can you do to become more balanced, to act on need and not on emotion? Remember, you are the women of courage. Fortitude can be defined as the strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or to bear pain or adversity with courage and staying power. Think about that for a moment. Fortitude is the strength you have when you go through adversity. Everyone listening will go through pain, struggle, and disappointment in our lives. That is a fact. But what defines each of us is what we do after that pain, after that struggle and disappointment. Do we lay down and become a victim or do we rise up and continue to push forward, continue to believe, continue to fight for ourselves? Remember, you are the women of courage. Resilient is defined as someone that can recover from or adjust easily to misfortune. Now I'm telling you, life is going to throw a lot of things your way. Some will be good and some will be bad. It is easy to be happy and optimistic when life is great. It is easy to be happy when your money's up, when your family's close, when you have a job. But we all know, life won't always be like this. So when those dark times start to happen, you need to realize this is just a season to a very long book about your life. You need to realize you are stronger than you think. You can overcome adversity through faith and understanding. You are strong and not alone. Hi, I'm going to introduce four more characteristics of a successful person. I want you to do a self-examination and use these characteristics to evaluate yourself. All of these words are used to describe people. The words are declaration, self-control, resilience, and fortitude. Most successful people make a declaration to themselves before they begin their journey to success. They tell themselves that they are going to win. Remember the song by George Benson? The song was entitled On Broadway, where he sang the lyrics saying, I know I'm going to be a star on Broadway because I can play this here guitar. The person Benson was singing about was a winner. This man said to himself that I am going to make it regardless to what else is happening in or around my life. I am going to be a star on Broadway because I'm confident in my talent to play this here guitar. This man was not going to allow someone to tell him what he could not do. Successful people demonstrate self-control where they learn to keep their mouths shut and they do not respond verbally to any and everything that is said to them. They select what they respond to. They avoid enticing situations that can cause them harm in the long run, such as smoking marijuana with friends, staying out late at night, going to after hour places, staying in dope houses, keeping friendships with people who are not going anywhere, these successful people also demonstrate resilience because they continue on their path regardless to what obstacles are put in their way. Successful people also have fortitude. Let us look into the dictionary to see what these words actually mean. 
Here are the definitions. Self-control is the ability to control oneself, in particular one's emotion and desires or the expression of them in one's behavior, especially in difficult situations. Fortitude is the courage in the face of pain or adversity. Resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from a difficulty or toughness, to spring back, to exhibit elasticity and variability. Now you need to go over these definitions so you will have a clear understanding of these words and how these words apply to your behavior. You are going to take these definitions and ask yourself, how do these definitions apply to me? Do I have fortitude? When do I exhibit fortitude? Have I made a declaration to myself about my future? And what have I planned to do about my future? Do I have self-control? When do I exhibit the emotion of self-control, fortitude, and resilience? When do I do not exhibit these emotions and why? There is nothing like a good self-examination to get your head straight. During your self-examination, be honest with yourself. No one is going to know what conclusions you're going to come to. You are going to put your information on a sheet of paper so you can look it over and over again so you can decide what part of your personality and emotions you need to work on in order to succeed. One thing you need to realize is that intellect is not the same as emotions. These are two separate energies that people sometimes get mixed up. Many people believe that just because someone is smart, they also are emotionally stable and always make the right decisions. This is not true. I am going to say something right now, and I want you to listen to me. I want you to truly hear me. Do not reject what I say, but I want you to think about what I am saying and examine my thoughts. Michael Jordan and LeBron James are not the greatest football players or basketball players of all time. There were men before Michael Jordan and LeBron James that were even greater. These men just did not get a shot at greatness. They went unnoticed. They were probably abused by a father. They were told they were stupid by an impatient mother or they were raped by their uncle. Tragedies keep people from achieving greatness in life. It is not only talent, but endurance and perseverance, fortitude and belief in oneself that causes people to achieve greatness and acknowledgement. In some neighborhoods, there are men who try to turn little girls into prostitutes and turn little boys into dope couriers or even worse, destroying these children before the children even have a chance to develop. Bullies use fear as a weapon against people, thereby preventing people from becoming successful. This is why you might have to move from your neighborhood to get away from people like this who are living debased lives. There is a scene in the movie Rocky where Sylvester Stallone, who is playing the role of Rocky Balboa, walks into the gym smoking a cigarette. And during that scene, Rocky Balboa develops an argument with Mickey Goldmill, a boxing trainer, who is played by Burgess Meredith. Rocky asks the boxing trainer, why was the trainer always sticking it to him? Rocky told the trainer he wanted to know how come the trainer was always sticking it to him for the last six years. The trainer told Rocky, you don't want to know. And the trainer called Rocky a dumb dago. The trainer was extremely disrespectful. Nevertheless, Rocky told the trainer he wanted to know why the trainer did not like him and did not treat him fairly. Burgess Meredith answered Rocky by saying this. He says, I'm sticking it to you because you had the talent to be a good fighter 
And instead of that, you became a leg breaker for some cheap second-rate loan shark. Rocky answered the trainer by saying, it's a living. The trainer replied to him and said, yes, but it's a waste of life. When you review this scene, look at Rocky's face. Once it dawns on him what the trainer has actually said to him. Go watch the movie and examine this scene. It's a powerful scene. Rocky doesn't get it at first. He answers the trainer by saying it's a living. Being a leg breaker for a long shark is a living. Finally, he realizes that he sold himself out. Rocky sold out on his dream. And the trainer was angry that Rocky had betrayed himself. Movie Rocky is a love story in many respects. And it talks about two people that got left behind in the old neighborhood. Rocky's father told him he had no brains, so he would have to use his body to make money. Adrian Penino, her mother told her she had no beauty, so she better develop her brain to earn a living. Both parents prophesied over their children's lives but they stopped there. They did not guide their children or help their children to realize their goal, probably because neither of these parents knew how to help their children. March 19, 2021, on the MSNBC show called Morning Joe, they discussed how much President Biden refers to his mother during his various speeches. The moderator showed 10 or 11 occasions where President Biden mentioned his mother. These clips demonstrated the effect a parent's words have on a child. President Biden is in his 70s, yet he still remembers things his mother told him about conducting his life. I knew my father loved me because he told me over and over again that he loved me. Every time he saw me, he would smile and call me Dirty Red. Children are deeply affected by the words of their parents. Now I want to say something about self-control because I think it's important. Before looking at self-control, we need to distinguish self-control from self-discipline so that we do not confuse the two when we are discussing them regarding your self-evaluation. Self-discipline is control over your conscious decisions to do or not to do, to speak or not to speak. What are you thinking and what are you imagining at any time? Self-discipline refers to the mind as it gives commands to the body. Self-control refers to the emotions and the actions and the reactions which we have learned during this and past lives which automatically occur when the appropriate stimulus is provided. Where self-discipline has to do with conscious decisions about behavior, self-control deals mainly with emotions and the things which we do automatically to protect our bodies our egos wherever they come under some form of attack. Self-control is not about feeling emotions, desires, and fears or not being involved wholeheartedly in everything that happens around us. It is about being in control of yourself no matter what the emotion, thought, and physical sensation that you are going through. Control is about learning to be unaffected by these things in such a way that you can maintain a balance, composure, and the ability to think clearly during any dangerous or emotionally charged experience. Control is also about having control over your reaction and inner reactions with other people even though you may have no control over the situation yourself. Self-control is not control. 
a serious problem for many people is that they believe they must be in control of the situation in which they are involved. This is a bad mistake. It causes a lot of anger, frustration, disappointment, and resentment. It could be the chief cause of stress in those who suffer from it. Self-control does not mean that you have to control everything that happens in your life. This isn't what it's all about. Self-control is about having all emotions, thoughts, and reactions to what is going on around you under control. It is not about controlling the situation of, that other people are involved in. People have a tendency to decide how each situation we are in should unfold. We have an agenda. We have an expectation of how things will turn out. The difference between the stressful person and the relaxed person is the amount of control he or she wants over any situation and the degree of flexibility he or she has regarding both the execution and the outcome. As a situation develops, it either moves toward an individual's desirable outcome or it moves away from it. If he likes to be in control and the situation is not to his liking, he will become more and more stressed. Negative emotions will build up. This is why I want you to pay close attention to your self-examination. You, you must be honest with yourself when you begin to compare yourselves with respect to all of the words we just discussed. Hi, I decided that at the end of every show for the next year, I would share excerpts from a book that I believe would enhance your life and make you a stronger thinker and problem solver. All characteristics that will help you win at life and raise stronger and healthy children. Many of you turn your nose up at reading or you snub the advice that you must read in life to succeed or you compare the cost of a book to getting a new pair of shoes or getting your hair done or your nails done. The reason why you make these cost comparisons is because you do not truly value a book. A book is a magnificent instrument that can change the course of your life and the lives of your children. In later shows, I plan to discuss with you how a book changes certain the lives of certain people. I understand that you do not earn a lot of money and this money is valuable to you because of all the things you see advertised that you desire and you do not want to spend a lot of money on a book. A new pair of shoes is more valuable to you than a book. If you truly cannot afford a book, then you need to go to the library and take your children with you for a day of reading. You must gird your loins and proceed at educating yourself. Some of you seem to think that having a conversation with your stupid girlfriend or your stupid boyfriend will help you more than reading a book. When actually having a conversation with your loudmouth girlfriend or loudmouth boyfriend is merely a cathartic allowing you to blow off steam and proclaim how life has been so unfair to you. What you do not realize is that the advice coming from your do-nothing girlfriend or your do-nothing boyfriend is advice coming from a fool. Your do-nothing girlfriend is a sexual opportunist looking for a man she can impress with her body. When her vagina fails her, what will your girlfriend do but go to work at McDonald's or Wendy at the age of 60 and continue to spread her ignorance at church? Her daughter will be on the street and her son in prison. She will never realize that her life is the result of the decision she made not to educate herself through reading. All her life, she felt that she had something better to do than reading. She had something better to do than 
reading with her children. She had something better to do than working with her children. And that was going to the bar, trying to entertain a man, or trying to find some man that would buy her a pair of shoes. A man spending money on her was more important than educating herself. In later shows, I'm going to spend a great deal of time giving you some examples of fools. These are people who think they are smart, willing to trade their body and integrity for a dollar bill. These people end up in the cemetery after lamenting each and every day of their lives about their unfilled dreams. Do not be upset by the use of the word fool. You tell me if a woman is not a fool to instruct her grandson to kill her husband for a $25,000 life insurance. Let that sink in for a moment. Instead of instructing her grandson to make something of his life, the grandmother instructs her grandson to become a murderer, to kill his grandfather. I have this anecdotal advice for you about reading. Listen to this short true story. A friend and I were talking. She said a woman she knew called her and sought to renew their friendship. During their conversation, the woman told my friend that President Trump had done so much for black people and that's why she voted for him in 2016 and she was going to vote for him again in the upcoming election. My friend asked her a question. She said, tell me some of the things that Trump has done for black people. The woman said a whole lot. My friend persisted and asked her to name one thing that Trump had done for black people. The woman could not. The woman kept using the phrase, a whole lot of things. My friend said after a while she stopped talking. Finally the conversation was over and my friend hung up. My friend said, as she hung up, she made up her mind right then that she would never renew her friendship with this woman. Now ask yourself why. Why would she not renew her friendship with this woman? You can answer this question in two words. The woman was a poor thinker. She never investigated anything that was told to her. Whether you know it or not, a person who is a poor thinker, who does not examine his or her thinking, is a very dangerous person indeed. Think about it. Today we will be discussing the book, What You Must Do to Win. This is an excellent read, and after you finish reading it, you will enjoy it, but you must put some of the ideas that the author talks about into practice. Reading is not enough. You must put these ideas into practice. The book, What You Must Do to Win, starts off with the question, are you not tired of being a fool? Then that question is followed by a quote from the Scarlet Letter. The quote says, Man, for any considerable period, can wear one face to himself and another to the multitude without finally getting bewildered as to which may be the truth. You loan Paul money, he never pays it back. You help Julia with her children, but she never remembers you during Christmas. There is more to life than looking for an opportunity to lie, cheat, and steal. Consider this, spending 20 to 40 years in prison is a waste of your life. You can do better and you need to tell yourself that you can do better. Have some pride about yourself. Learn to think. Learn to read well and leave your foolish friends behind. Stop being afraid of life and stop avoiding the responsibility you have to yourself. Some people say if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. Why not read this book and find out how reading can change your life and bring health and wealth to you.
You have nothing to lose. Two hours out of your day will change your life drastically. Just because you started your life from a position of weakness does not mean that you have to remain weak. Take control of your life. Stop associating with men who are fools. In this book, you're going to learn how to recognize a fool, even if that fool is yourself. The only problem with being a fool is if one continues to be a fool. Everyone makes mistakes and everyone does foolish things. That behavior is part of life. But the behavior does not have to be part of your life in continuing that behavior. When is enough enough? When are you going to face the fact that your marriage is no good because of you? When are you going to face the fact that your children are failing at life because of you? When are you going to face the fact that you need to change? You need to know when you are talking to a fool. You need to know how to recognize a fool. The word fool is not a nice term. People do not like it. The word is demeaning and makes people feel bad to be called a fool. Nevertheless, the word remains in the dictionary because it is a word that accurately describes the behavior of some people. If you do not like being a fool or you are tired of thinking you are a fool, it is time to change. When you left high school, you never envisioned yourself spending time in jail. You never envisioned yourself as a drug courier. You never thought you would burglarize a house or sit inside of a dope house holding a shotgun just to make money. You could have avoided all of these jobs if you had learned to read. All you have to do is learn to read. Reading brings you knowledge, and knowledge brings you creative ideas and know-how. You can learn a new trade by reading. You can learn to become a mechanic by reading, a carpenter by reading, and even a plumber if you know how to read. You need to make up your mind that you want to do something with your life, and then you need to change. You need to change your environment, and you need to change your friends. Wisdom is defined as the quality or state of being wise. Knowledge of what is true or right coupled with just judgment as to action, discernment, or insight. How wise are you going to be today? Are you going to change? Are you going to start living your life being respectful of yourself and others? If you participate in any of the above behaviors, you are not only foolish, you are a follower. You let someone tell you that that behavior was smart. So one of the first steps of not being foolish is to change your friends. Leave all your, the foolish people in your life alone. There is too much pain in our communities. There are too many people living painful lives. We have too many unhappy children. We have too many unhappy seniors. There is too much anger in our community. There is too much hatred in our community. And there is too much self-loathing in our community. Something needs to be done about it. A few hours of your time can solve the problem. All you have to do is learn to read and separate yourself from evil thinking people. You must separate yourself from all the predators living around you. One thing which may be painful is that you must realize there can be evilness in your family. Once you identify evil acting people in your family, you must leave them alone. You must not eat with, sleep with, talk with, or walk with anyone who is essentially different than you. 
If you do, you may lose your life or either their evilness may cause the death of your children. God is not going to defend your mind for you. It is your responsibility. With the word of God in your mouth and in your heart, you can defeat the enemy's suggestions every time. You know that you're talking to the enemy anytime you become angry at a conversation, irritated or depressed. Here is a word from Ephesians 4.21 to 24. It says, since you have heard about Jesus and you have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. This is your new identity in Jesus Christ. Put forth your best effort to keep yourself in the right frame of mind. Stay in the word and keep out of the wrong influences as an act of your will. When you become a good custodian over your thought life, you will be victorious over the negative thinking and the pain associated with that thought life. Ephesians 4.21 says God's word can defeat the enemy's suggestions and the verse says the spirit can renew our thoughts and our attitude. Why not try God's word and see what it can do for your life? You believe in ghosts and goblins. You believe in monsters. Why can't you believe in God? You need to make up your mind whether or not you believe there is a God. If you believe God exists, then you follow him. You need to make up in your mind what type of life you want to live and you, who you want living that life with you or around you. If your best friends exhibit bad behavior, you will just have to leave him or her alone. Galatians 4.13 says, tell, it tells you, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That is, you want, that is what you want to do. Ask God to strengthen you. These are the two passages in the Bible that you must take with you when you go into battle. A battle as defined as any opposition. I'm not talking about just a battle with guns. I'm talking about a battle of the mind. When you have to go to work and you're tired because you've been working two jobs. That is right. You will always be in a battle when you try to change your life and stop associating with bad people. You will need help when you try to extricate yourself from the affairs of others, including your family members. Put these passages to memory. They will serve you well during hard times when you despair, when you are afraid, you think God has not heard you. The world says when you are experiencing hard times, you're supposed to suffer. You are supposed to to do what you have to do. In other words, prostitute your body, steal or kill for food, accept low wages, and accept abuse from your employer. Go home, eat a plate of denial, and drink a glass of hatred. You are to bemoan your life and accept your fate. Read these passages several times, especially while you are at work during your break or lunch hour. These passages will help you through the day. Your enemy does not want you to believe in Psalms 23 or Psalms 91. He wants you to believe your situation is desperate. Just remember the situation with the leopards. God has always turned the situation around. The Syrians had deserted their camp, but no one in Samaria knew it until the leopards stumbled upon the Syrian camp. Then they went and told everyone the news. Remember Isaiah 65, 24? People were praying inside the wall for God to deliver them. And they had received their deliverance and they didn't know it. It took the lepers going to the enemy's camp for the Israelites to realize they had been saved. 
sometimes you have to be still, quiet your spirit, so you can receive directions. We live in a physical world, but our destiny is determined in the spiritual world. God has given us his word to tell us how to conduct our lives. God says we are to take his word to create a life, repeat his word to enhance our creative power. God says choose life. To do this, you must believe and you must stand up. Do not let negative people and toxic relationships keep you from realizing your dreams. You can be a better person. You must stop doing what you're doing and decide on a better life. The drinking, the smoking, the snorting coke, the lustering after someone else's boyfriend or husband, and sexing every day changes what you can realize out of life. Disrespect yourself, have sex with every man you meet, and bring people in, men especially, into your home and allow them to mistreat your children. You have given up. You do not know how to manage your life. How long are you going to go before you change? Your children will not survive if you do not change. Take a good look at your children. They will not have a future if you do not change. Are you not tired of being or seeing black boys and black men being carted off to prison for lack of knowledge and opportunity? Are you not tired of seeing black women standing on the corner prostituting? Are you not tired of envying other people saying to yourself, I wish that were me? Stop fantasizing, stop being ashamed because you are poor and uneducated and afraid. Stand up and change your life. Change is hard, but why die expressing regret? Today, I want to talk about declaration. Making the announcement about who you will become. The thing about declaring or making a statement is once you say it, you begin to own it. It becomes yours. Today, I will no longer be a victim. Today, I will begin to make change. Today, I will start to take care of myself. Those are statements that you can own. Do not allow someone else's opinion have the final words on your heart. I want you to declare who you are. Declare who you will become. Today is the day for change. Today, I want to talk about self-control. The restraint exercised over one person's impulses, emotions, or desires. It is easy nowadays to lose control. We eat too much, drink too much, everything is accessible to us. The hard part in life is finding that balance, that presence of mind to know what is good for you and to live with that discipline. I know through my own journey that when I am balanced, when I'm showing self-restraint, I start moving better, I start thinking better, I become more confident in who I am. And that's what I want you to think about. What can you do to become more balanced, to act on need and not on emotion? Remember, you are the women of courage. Fortitude can be defined as the strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or to bear pain or adversity with courage and staying power. Think about that for a moment. Fortitude is the strength you have when you go through adversity. Everyone listening will go through pain, struggle, and disappointment in our lives. That is a fact. But what defines each of us is what we do after that pain, after that struggle and disappointment. 
do we lay down and become a victim or do we rise up and continue to push forward continue to believe continue to fight for ourselves remember you are the women of courage resilient is defined as someone that can recover from or adjust easily to misfortune. Now I'm telling you, life is gonna throw a lot of things your way. Some will be good and some will be bad. It is easy to be happy and optimistic when life is great. It is easy to be happy when your money's up, when your family's close, when you have a job. But we all know, life won't always be like this. So when those dark times start to happen, you need to realize this is just a season to a very long book about your life. You need to realize you are stronger than you think. You can overcome adversity through faith and understanding. You are strong and not alone. Why get up in the morning to live your nightmare the whole day? Doing things that make it a horrible day. Wasting time and taking pain. Just wishing for things to change without realizing you can be the change. You can be the prophet of your own life. You are the solution. You can turn your life around. You can still complete your education. You can still find a better job. You can still find love. You can still be happy. Take control of your life. Live the life you deserve because you are the prophet of your life. You can read the first chapter of the book by going to the website https colon slash slash touchbythelight.us. Order You Are the Prophet of Your Life today. Join us at the Women of Courage show every Friday from 3 to 4 p.m. and every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. for information that will change your life. You can